Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm Timothy Mark. And Timothy Mark, we are here today (laughs) to talk about how we can overcome unrighteous anger Ooh. with all the uh, the LBGTQ conversations that have been having, happening uh, last few weeks. Uh, last few weeks. Uh, we're going to dive into this next one. So Mark Timothy Hyde, are you ready? In the words of Mandisa, I'm an overcomer. Let's go. Let's go. I'm pretty sure I said Mark Did Timothy. I hit my note? I'm pretty sure I said Mark Timothy Hyde rather than Timothy Mark I just want to know Mark if I hit Hyde. my Mandisa note. I can't hit no Kelly Clarkson notes, but I I, I can I, try for Mandy. I, I guess you need, to, you need to be trying to do You're this. You're coming. No, you didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the show, guys. It's so good to be back. Woo. The past couple of weeks, it's been some throwback episodes. Wow, I throwback just episodes. Out the system. Throwback. Did you really? I did. It? I think so. But Dang, the throwback bro. episodes to uh, a few of our. I think it was episode uh, thirty-two and one sixty something. I don't know. I'm just hoping like we that. didn't actually go real live. Did we accidentally go real live? It I says live, so I don't know. It, it didn't. No, because it's recording only. Guys, we're so tired of we're, using our old junky software, so we're upgrading. We've officially, because of Fuller, upgraded. So hopefully on YouTube, it looks a little better, sounds a little it's better. all articulating with the sounds last coming week, from Last week, OB, or I guess technically it was last week, but three weeks ago, OBS screwed up our sound, so. Yeah, it, it we... Didn't it have the roadcaster no, on for fault. so long? It's their fault. <laughs> it's never, never take the blame. Point the blame. But it anyways, was not our fault. Timothy Mark Hyde, how are you this evening? I'm good. good. I'm, I'm good. over caffeinated. Just a little bit. I'm still drinking. You I, didn't. You didn't go get a refill, did I, you? I didn't, but I still have some left in here. This and is why it's we still the Yetis. Warm. Well, so this is why I brought our yeti. Yeah, 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 yeti. Well, mine's off brand. Mine's non bougie yeti. So Beth bought a yeti, and I was like, "Babe, that's stupid. Why are you buying like a little mini cup that's basically like a like a tumbler or whatever?" And she goes, "No, I want it because you know, as a mom, especially with the way we have to feed Lennox, most of the time before she even hits her coffee, it's already cold because of the amount of stuff she has to do with Lennox. That's just being a mom, or, I think. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> or it's like the coffee's always getting spilled or bumped or whatever. Yeah. So she's like, "I want coffee that keeps it warm, doesn't spill, as doesn't easily. spill, and is and yeah. is a mug." She goes, "I want to hold." She because Beth loves holy mugs. Yeah. So back in the day, when she would take the kids to school, she would always take. The, she had a specific monk that fit in the cup holder, and she would take it to school. And I could drop them off and go back home. And so she's like, yeah, I read good reviews on the Yeti. I want to do it. And she got it. And she goes, hey, try this. See how it tastes. And I'm like, oh, that, that still tastes real good. Is that like fresh? She goes, no, it's like an hour ago. I'm like, hold up. You're like, I want one now. So I, yes, yeah, Pat, yeah. man. So I ordered one. Well, I prime one day shipping. It was all, actually, no, same day. I got same day shipping. <laughs> so I ordered it at like midnight. So, you know, whatever. But <laughs> so, I mean, it's, I was feeding Lennox. And I mean, that's kind of what happened. I did my midnight what feed. It and I it. So I got my, I got my Yeti. And I'm normally, I'm not a Yeti. Like, I'm a very, like, I, I like real ceramic mugs. But sure. it's nice. I, dude, check this out. So I had an appointment down in Napanee. So, and Napanee's like what was it 40 minutes from our house or something like that? 30, 40, yeah, something around there. Our yeah, house yeah, and it's right. still being Pride Month. I don't mean like our house, like being folder, but we live in the same area. So it just kind of we're like, happens. We're like almost neighbors. We actually, we were almost even closer with one house that we wanted. Like we did, we said no to that house and chose this one. Thankfully, we got this one. We're still in the neighborhood though. Um, but we would have been off Jeffrey, which would have been even closer. Right. Uh, but we're not. So we're across the tracks. We're on the other side of the tracks. But um, you're on the right side of the tracks. Where was I going with that? I don't know. I don't know where I was. Oh, so I was in Napanee. It's like 45 minutes from the house because I had a, I had a meeting down there in my all time like favorite cafe because Amish everything is Main Street Roasters down in Napanee. Yes, so I got some I roasters. Love their coffee. You can't beat their coffee cake, they're their good. cinnamon yeah. rolls, their oh. sandwiches. Get in my belly. <laughs> Amish do it right. Get in my belly. Amish don't know how to do a lot of things, but they can play softball and, and make some dang good food. So and I got cook. some of that. And so I'm down and there hanging barns. out. And, and <laughs> they can raise a barn real damn quick. <laughs> but so what I did is I attached my Yeti to my North Face backpack. Speaking of North Face, I looked like a camper. So I walked in, ordered coffee, took their cup this way. <laughs> like right into my Yeti and, into the Yeti and it go. stayed warm the whole time. I got my refill and it stayed warm again. And so I'm like, did I just have a cheat code for coffee shops? Like go there, get their coffee. Take I mean, I had their your cup own mug and take your own mug. You should ask for a discount you know? if you don't use some places cup. do, I but know. because of COVID, they don't really, most don't do it anymore because of COVID COVID ruined everything. Anyways, it. it's but good either to way, be I got back. my Yeti. 
I'm glad that this is our second recording back in the studio. It's good to be back less in kinks the this time. saddle. A little bit less kinks where you are using StreamYard, so it's it's new software to us. We'll figure Which, it out along the, the way. This is the same software that we used to interview Morgan and, and uh, Tim and Sarah Carroll. It and, is. And hopefully we got some more interviews coming up here soon. I surely hope so. I mean, we got a couple in the works. So, so. we were supposed to have an interview. Okay, so a while back, maybe you remember us having Coat on the show talking about raising Christian kids. Coat, coat. He's coming back because he there's something called the kaleidoscope bible check out the kaleidoscope bible one of the dopest bibles for kids he wrote genesis and so we're bringing him to talk all about genesis how to understand it, how to for us to understand how do we teach it to our kids because it's freaking wild when you really think about all the things of genesis sure like uh creation and the fall and how does all that work and how does the flood work and geez god just being like i i, I don't like any of y'all. i'm just going Whoop. Kill all you fools. And then you got like some weird stuff in like there's just a lot of weird stuff in Genesis. Yeah. Like what are we supposed to do with all this and how we're supposed to teach our kids. So but so, he texted me, he goes, Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I mean, he goes, he goes, because Emily's pregnant with baby number five. Was. What well, well, was now. But he texted me, he, he goes, Yeah, I mean, he goes, unless she comes early, yeah, we good. And then I got a text this morning and said, Bro, good news, bad news, good news. Mama's baby's healthy. Bad news is I won't be around I won't be for on the, the show. Interview. But that's okay. So 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 either way, we got the interview coming down the bike. Hopefully, some more. But tonight's yep. not an interview. Tonight is more of a teaching conversation. It's the it's the old school Pastor Mark Fuller combo teaching and method. teaching. But before we get into it, man, you know, in the Facebook group, I asked the question of what should we talk about on the top of the episode today. And there were two things that I thought were really funny. But the one is going to be a really. Oh, but you don't know the other one. I was going to ask. So, because so in in the I know the one is the, the really live good. stream. I was it the live stream episode like two hours where we're talking about like words we can't say or how do we pronounce things like potato potato sure or caramel sure, yeah. caramel Something crayon like crayon maybe that was the week before I don't remember what it was but um in the group I, I'm trying to think who it was I think it was was it Kayla who posted it I think it might have been Kayla I'm I'm pulling it up right now. I actually had to delete Facebook off my phone because I was getting uh And yet you're on Facebook. No, I'm on the web browser. <laughs> it's still Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kayla. Kayla, who lives here locally, fun fact, here in Michigan area. So Kayla, she she posted a picture of the thing that you it's on one wheel and you lift and wheelbarrow. carry it around the world. How do you how do you see she says, how do you guys say this word? Wheelbarrel. What? Wheel barrel. Bear roll? That's the like way I thought it. But roll? it's but, but it, yes, but it's a barrow. Wheelbarrow. Well barrow. Uh, do it in your Forrest Gump voice. Well, uh, like that. that day. But so, so here's the deal. So so people are like, oh, I say it like this. And I don't, I always thought it was a Will Barrow versus this. And I'm like, I say it like you say Joe Burrow, like the Bengals quarterback. I say a Will Burrow. A Will, Will Burrow. I won't go well, well, white and blue with my Will Burrow. Will Burrow. But I say, no, grab the Will Burrow. <laughs> my wedge. My wedge. Is what wings, wings us together, together today. today. <laughs> and Kayla's like, I never heard anyone say it like that. I'm like, girl, when you listen to the podcast, you learn how to say a lot of things wrong because of me. We call it Markisms. Yeah. Markisms <laughs> with the, you know, yeah. Fifth and sixth graders. <laughs> yeah. The, them Sith. Speaking of Sith. <laughs> Spe- oh, good transition. Ah, Another what? question they said, what's better, Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? Why you why you give your opinion on what is better and okay. why? So this one is very, very hard for me because I am a super fan of both Star Wars and and oh, of Lord uh, Nathan, of the Rings. Nathan, Nathan, which Nathan, you're coming to Revive Fest, I yes. think, right? I think yep, you're driving yep, up, yep, right, bro? Yep, I'm, yep, like, yep. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually more nervous about meeting like our listeners than actually going on stage. Should and we talking. do like like suit and tie and be like, hello, we are ITC podcasting hosts. I've been eating too much meatloaf. I don't know if I can fit in a suit, <laughs> my, my suit anymore. It seems like every time I wear it, I have to get a new you one. You can borrow one of mine. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this dad bod is no joke. But no, Nathan goes, how, oh, 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 my bad. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I read the question wrong. My apologies. He said, how is Star Wars better? How, oh, no, how Star Wars is better than the Lord of the Rings? See, see I have a problem with this. Because he made a statement. Homeboy so, made a statement. Star so Wars is better than Lord of the Lord Rings. Lord of the Rings is is awesome. I love Lord of the Rings, but I love the Star Wars universe too. Know. Well, that's, yeah. Well, you know, you hate Seth too, but what can we say? <laughs> it's true. But I like... Uh, You're Disney, so be careful. Be I, careful. I like how George Lucas has really expanded, how he expanded the... Oh, so the, you're a fan of it. The Star Wars universe early on, but I think they've lost the George Lucas touch since they lost George Lucas. I mean, some of it, I, I love The Mandalorian. I love Boba Fett. I love, I'm looking forward to Ahsoka in the fall. Did you like Andor? I, 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 I haven't and, even watched it. Andor was okay. 
it wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't like uh, episode nine. Wasn't a tr- it wasn't like I season three really of Ted Lasso, for. where it was terrible. I, I think the the post trilogy movies, you know, the seven, eight, and nine. I thought those were terrible. With Kylo Ren and yeah. uh, crap. I, what's uh, her name? Uh, uh, yeah. But anyways. my brain went. My brain went. Gwen Stacy. Nope, no, that's Spider Man. Yeah. But anyways, those three movies. Uh, oh, Ray. Come on. Ray. Ray. Thank you, Sugar so Ray Leonard. Wait, the, what? <laughs> Those three movies were terrible of in, in comparison to the Star Wars universe. I even ranked those lower than episode one. So that's where I'm at. Whoa, but I, you that's know, a statement. I've watched all the Clone Wars, all the animated, the animated series. I heard, I heard so, that is phenomenal. I've watched all of Rebels. I've watched. Did you see there's a junior one now? Like I, there's a new I, one for little kids? I've watched all of those. Have you? I, I see. Yeah, I got kids. I want to watch it now. with the kids. Well, I did so, watch it with the kids. I haven't and, able they're, to. and they're great. And so I love the whole star wars universe as a whole mm-hmm. but i am a huge middle earth fan as well and and to pit the two against the other that's that's like i don't know pitting together me and janiel no it's like pitting together like <laughs> peter versus paul you really can't pick a favorite you like yeah them both. me or janiel okay i'm picking janiel Dang sorry it. bro i love you but bro, Dang i'm it. picking janiel Dang it. i tried i tried i tried that's like me saying me or beth I mean, do you want to live? You're going to say Beth. I mean, come on. True. I mean, can't, I mean, can't be <laughs> It Beth, may be dude. June, but we ain't you rolling can, that way, bro. You can smoke some meat. You can smoke some meat, but you ain't no Beth. No. Nope. No, no I'm not. True. And you are no Janiel. So nope. we, we can agree on those and terms. And the sourdough bread can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so, Anyways. so if you would say, which one do you prefer? If I say, okay, Fuller, you got, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. Okay. Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, which has to go? What's your answer? I can't. Oh, mine's easy. It's Star Wars. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? 100%. Really? Yeah. You're not a huge Star Wars fan? I am. My dad was a Star Wars nut. I made Beth watch all the Star Wars movies because of, you know, it's just, just part of the game. But I can make the, the, the funny, you know, Christian joke of, uh, Star Wars is Buddhism, whereas Lord of the Rings is based off of Christianity. But you know that's that conversation. But I don't all, bring facts into this argument. Facts are my feelings, bro. <laughs> but no, no, no. With Lord of the okay, so so the other thing too. I mean, I've never read the books, but <gasps> what? How can you say lo- you are Lord of the Rings fans, but you never read the books? Have you listened to the audio books at least? I mean, I know you like listen to audio. No, bro, bro, you don't know nothing about no Tom Bombadil. I actually, I know who I know who it is. Yeah, but you don't know no. nothing about no Tom Bob. Oh man, you ain't a fan. I Marissa Latson has said the same thing, to bro. Me. Bro, you can't even talk. Right Which now. side note? You know, Marissa Latson is a, her name was officially on a, on the IMDb website. I know. Is that so cool? That is cool. So, Marissa, what's up, friend? But Marissa is one of my former students who's now the Purdue film major and is crushing life right now. Yeah. But either way, so but you think about Lord of the Rings, right? So the Lord of the Rings, the thing I love. About Lord of the Rings. Number A, is there's a theory out there? <laughs> wait, wait, you say number A? Isn't that letter A or number Case one? Case point, Kayla, <laughs> you learn a lot of weird things when you listen to this. Number A. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love you, man. You're the best. <laughs> You're what make the show so entertaining. Bullet point A. <laughs> Bullet point A. Bullet point slash backslash subset. Okay, Z. so with Star Wars, there's the whole like battle versus good and evil and the force and whatnot. Sure. But in my opinion, there is not a whole lot of the beautiful story of friendship in Star Wars as much as there is with Sam. What are you with Pippin and with Wait a second. Wait, what about Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker when Obi-Wan goes, you are my brother, Anakin. I mean, that, that was a touching moment where, like, they were. They were like a father and son figure plus brother figures, both chosen by Qui-Gon Jinn. There's a whole... If you watch Clone Wars, there's a whole other realm that brings it together, man. But can you take a potato? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? What's Tulsa's process? <laughs> Can you mash it and put it in a stew? <laughs> so, but, but, but you, you, got, stew? you got you got Samwise Ganji, who was just like the OG friend of OG friends. You got this beautiful storyline about how it's not necessarily good versus evil in the internal struggle. It's the the it's not an internal struggle. It's the battle against evil, right? There's a battle of versus evil, and it's it's very clear in Lord of the Rings what's good and what's evil. And in Lord of the Rings, they try to like, oh, what's really good and what's really evil. Um, but also, when you think about the story of Bilbo, and then 
you know, uh, Mary and Pippin, which side note, the guy who plays Mary and Pippin right now are, I love seeing their, their reels and stuff. Cause yeah. they are just thinking whole Like they, right. they literally are still hobbits living in real life. Sure. Um, but you got Samwise, Gangi, you got Frodo, which have you seen the theory that Frodo does not know Legolas's name? Because that is the only name he doesn't say in the entire series. Hmm. He never says his name. He does in the book. Does he? I'm Marissa, pretty sure he know. does. But I've heard a theory that Frodo does not know Legacy's his actual <laughs> name because um, he says everyone else's name. But but you know but but the the storyline and the art of of Lord of the Rings is such a beautifully you know I can't say beautifully written because I don't know but it's a beautifully written piece of of the the power of friendship and good versus evil and that good triumphs over it. and here's how good triumphs over it kind of like the same idea with C.S. Lewis and Frodo never says movie. his name in the movie right. So now I'm looking. I'm looking. See, for, there's a whole big theory on this. And come on, there's a lot of things that there's a uh, lot of jokes that come out of Lord of the Rings. Like we're taking the hobbits to Isengard. We're taking the hobbits to Isengard. You know, there's a lot of fun jokes, but no, I I, I think Star Wars pales in comparison to Lord of the Rings. I think there's a lot of pop culture. I think it has the Disney machine behind it now. I think. The Lord of the Rings original three were fantastic. I actually enjoyed episodes one, two, and three. I really did enjoy all of them. But now it's like, man, I feel like, I don't want to say they're polluting it because there's nothing wrong with it. They're making the series go and grow. But is it better than Lord of the Rings? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's not like picking between two good things. It's like, bro, what do you, what do you want? You want steak or you want hot dogs from the grill? Like, that's my opinion. But see, hot dogs are good on a certain They're day. good. No, no. Exactly. And then steaks but, are good on a certain day. But steaks are not always good. They're good on a certain yeah, day. Yeah, because there's some bad moments in Lord of the Rings. I'm like, <laughs> anyway, I enjoy the Hobbits. I enjoy Lord of the Rings. I, I actually, oh, I need to finish the Amazon Prime series. So I was watched it and I got caught up to date and then like Lennox. So, yeah, and then that, I, then that I then was, I forgot. That, there's so much controversy surrounding that. And there, it, Sorry for that really long, yeah, like, anyways. thoughtless banter, but... Star Anyways, Wars, Lord of the Rings, you say it's like tomato, tomato, and I'm like, nah, bro. It's, it's, it's a whole this. thing. All right. At least we have opinions on it, though. We do have an opinion on it. Just like the opinion that we got from our listeners. Ah, I'll read this. I'll read the review, because <laughs> here's the deal, all right? So, um, first off. From your boy? From your boy, Kevin, who lives in Highland, which is the town I grew up in. <laughs> Highland. Well, I grew up in Hammond, and then over to Highland. Highland. Hammond, not Hammond, but Hammond. And then I moved he's over a, to Highland. He's a Highlander. Yes, he, yes, he is Highland Trojans, baby. Um, and so I'm going to l- read the review because you have a big episode in store for us. So this is, sure. Um, I can't read the full title because it just goes dot, dot, dot because the title is so long. But finally, a solid biblical base. Up on January 5th, it says, Timothy, in parentheses, Mark, and parentheses, Chris Fuller, LOL. This podcast is simply amazing. You guys really bring the word of God into every aspect of life and truly show us what it's like to live through a Christian worldview. I love how you both agree on most topics in your podcast, but aren't afraid to challenge each other in different ways. Go back and listen to two hour live stream to find out. I was definitely in a low with my everyday walk with Christ, starting and stopping many devotionals, which, hey, I feel you, boss. I feel you, which I've recently listened to our daily bread in the mornings when I take care of Lennox. Nice. After listening to one podcast, I was hooked. If you are looking for a podcast that uses the Bible, not man-made doctrine, to talk about what being a Christian and how to live in today's world as Christian looks like, you are in the right spot. P.S. I don't listen on iTunes. I listen on Spotify. But I had to give you another five-star rating here. You're Your my boy, boy from Kevin. Highland, Kevin. Well, Kevin, my dude. You are a boy. And since you're so dang close, you should come up to Revive Fest. Nice plug in for the Revive Fest. What date is that again? I actually forgot. Uh, uh, that's, the 20, that, that's not a setup. I legitimately the, forgot. The 21st and 22nd of July, I believe. I'm gonna find out. I probably yes, because it, it interferes with the last uh, day of VBS for Southside. Yes. Yeah, because I... Yeah. Did you know I'm playing Mark the role of Mark High? Oh! <gasps> And Brandon Associa is playing this, the role of Scott Smith. You're the comic relief? I am the hype man. What? Yeah, Dude. your boy. And you're going to crush it. Your boy is the Wait, hype so man. so are you ditching the last day of VBS I to go am. to Revive Fest? I am. And uh, John Myers is going to be uh, having to you know, take over for it. 
He's I, I love the man, but he's not a hype man. <laughs> well, you, he's gonna we'll have, see. What he's gonna have to happens. learn. Right, you got right, those dates. The twenty first and the twenty second. Hey, what dude, did I say? That I said the twenty. Did I say the twenty second? Twenty third. I, I honestly wasn't really. Twenty first and twenty second of July. And we got some big bands coming here, guys. We got Sidewalk Profits. We got Sanctus Real. Sanctus Real. <laughs> we have. Well, pull it up. We got um. I don't think it's run. Do we have Run Collective coming? Run Collective. Too? Um. Uh. It's, the Messengers. It's not pulling up. Is, your web, is the website broken? <coughs> no, it's... Uh, I forget. I, I think you got to go through the Facebook to pull up. No, you got to go to the schedule. You didn't click it, the down tab. It, didn't, it, it just says announcements. Does Matt Grimm need their website updated? It says announcements coming. Light up. Oh. Yeah, so, so, so we, we are, are messengers. messengers. He is fantastic. Sanctus Real. That's Friday. Rend Collective. Saturday, which they put on a party. Sidewalk Profits. Social Club okay, Misfits. Okay, so most of y'all ain't going to know Social Club Misfits because they are the, the definition of like indie hip hop and, and rap. But dude, they got some boots and then they got a bunch of other. And then El- random, Elbelade. They got a bunch of other local local people, including your boys. We will be on the main stage having a good old time. Last week or last year, they gave us the mic for like five minutes. Ooh, Poppers Field is they're, they're pretty decent. And I got everyone mad at me because I said, hail, hail Notre Dame with a yeah, very heavily Michigan audience. That was intentional for you, Matt Grimm. They go, you got five minutes, and the first thing he goes, he goes, hell, hell, first, Notre Dame. first of all, I got to say to all you people up here in Michigan, hell, hell, Notre Dame. And it was like instant boo. <laughs> it was awesome. But we'll be back hanging out there. We'll have a booth. We'll have a tent. We're not bringing our recording equipment because that, that didn't do nothing last year. <laughs> well, I think we're supposed to, though. We oh, need to are we? Yeah, because remember, we're supposed to have like interviews with some <gasps> of these guys. So, I mean... That We've been be, a little busy trying to keep it alive, so we I'm going to keep up with we Matt. Gotta, we got to finalize things with Matt. Yep, but we I'll be doing a workshop. Matt. We'll be doing a workshop. Yep. You'll be doing something. You'll be doing push-ups on stage. It'll be a good time. I'll be, yeah, something. Lifting something. the Lord's the name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. And I will be the, I will be the calm, Before cool the storm. bumpers to keep you in, in your lane while you're being the hype man. Boop, 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 boop. Beep, 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 beep. Like like a pinball machine. Basically, like Pong. <laughs> All right. Well, let's All right, dive let's into this episode. Diving in. I'm going deep. <laughs> and in my head, I want to be. Bingo. I hear saying twice <laughs> tonight, guys. Yeah. It's a... And they both were off key. <laughs> Anyways, let's do a, a quick recap of episode 188, where we talked about what is the difference between unrighteous and righteous anger. Oh, do yeah. You, right. I remember you, that do one. Do you remember this whole thing? So Yeah, like five months ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So two quick recaps, right, of what is unrighteous. Unrighteous anger seeks to hurt, can be from pride, can be from past hurts, seeks revenge, can be selfish, etc., etc., etc. Righteous is uh, angry about things that God would be angry about, is not self-seeking, is motivated out of love for others, is grounded in love and the fruits of the Spirit, etc., etc., etc. And if you don't remember that, pause this episode. Go back. Go, go back to listen to episode 188. Going back. Back, and then come back. back 12 episodes to episode 200 here. Well, I guess song? it's not 200. Oh, oh, oh. It's not 200 now. It's 203. 200. Dang it. 200, we screwed 202, it up. 202. 202. No, because right. two, two, yeah, 202. This is 202. You're right. Dude, we just crossed the 200 mark. We had a 100th episode thing and a giveaway and a live Man, stream. We, we, we messed Dude, up. Dude, you know, over our break, we crossed a half a million downloads. I, I did realize. You know what we're going to do for our, our 200th episode? What? Come to Revive Fest and find out. <laughs> but, Jim. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, guys. I'm scared. I don't either. Uh, (laughs) So what are some ways we can overcome anger, right? So let's look at some. We know what unrighteous anger is. We know what righteous anger is. Now, how do we overcome it? Oh, 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 so this is putting, like, action steps to it. This is, like, how do we live it out in in, in reality, in real life? Okay. Because we're real talk. I I feel that. Faith, culture, and society. Bam. (laughs) Anyways, Fine. so uh, we can love and treat others well. The golden rule, obviously, most of us have grown up hearing about the golden rule. What we call the golden rule, rule refers to Matthew 7, chapter, or chapter, chapter Matthew chapter 7, seven, verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Jesus knew the human heart and its selfishness. In fact, in the preceding verse, he describes humans being as innately, quote-unquote, evil in verse 11. Jesus' golden rule gives us a standard by which naturally selfish people can gauge their actions, actively treat others the way they themselves like to be treated. So Mm. basically uh, what we're seeing here at GodQuestions.org, not sponsored, is um, he's referring to the golden rule as a good gauge for those people who may tend to be a little bit more self-seeking. Frustrating. (laughs) frustrating to, to gauge himself on when they're treating somebody in the butts 
else are they treating them well? Mm. So that's a good. What's the what's the platinum? Isn't there like a platinum rule too? Isn't it like don't do to others what you don't want people to do to you? There's something like that. I don't, <sighs> I don't remember. Know. That's, but basically, the golden rule is like wh- how you want to be treated, treat other people. Right. Like exactly. it's common sense, guys. Right. It's common sense. Right. So the English Standard Version translates the golden rule like this: Whatever you wish that others would do to you, there you go. Do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Jesus bril- brilliantly condenses the entire Old Testament into the single principle taken from Leviticus nineteen eighteen. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Again, we see the implication that people are naturally lovers of self, and the command uses the human flaw as a place to start in how to treat other. Notice how our friends at gotquestion.org stated that it's a good place to start. start right? So so when we're when we're dealing with unrighteous anger or even righteous anger, that word does we don't know how to do it. We're always angry. We're constantly blowing up. The first place, the starting point is to think about, okay, how do I want to be treated in the situation? Right. I probably should treat them the same way. I don't want to be kicked in the shin and my Which, hair can pulled. I say, that's really hard. Like, you know, it, I always thought forgiveness was easy until I had to have push come to shove and the crap hit the fan and went, yeah. oh, snap. Yeah. Or like uh, when a kid comes up and you kicks you in the no-no zone and you're like, I really want to kill you. <laughs> Normally it's a headbutt. Yeah. Or like a, a Superman punch. Oh. That's what Shiloh likes to do all the time. So yep. watch yourself when he's around. Yep. <laughs> Just an FYI. It's good to know. That's his new thing. So it's a Superman punch. <laughs> Anyways, so that that's one way that, that, that that's the good starting point, right, is to okay. remember the golden rule. What's another good thing to remember is the, the two greatest commandments that Christ gave us, right? So it. it we, we see quite a few things coming out of how do we love others, which is really what the heart of Jesus' ministry was, was was getting down to the intentionality of your heart rather than just the actions that, that you portray, right? Okay. So the whitewashed tomb, think of the whitewashed tomb, right? You can look good right. on the outside. You but can, dead on the inside. But dead on the inside. Yeah. So it's all about being alive on the inside, being whitewashed on the inside, not just the outside. Yep. So Jesus was asked this very question, by the, again, this is from gotquestions.org, uh, and this will be in the show notes, what is the greatest commandment? So uh, Jesus was asked this very question by a Pharisee uh, who was considered to be an expert in the law, according to Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 36. Jesus answered by saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two, two commandments. Matthew, again, chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus gives us two commandments that summarize all the laws and commands in scripture. The 10 commandments in Exodus 20 deal with our relationship with God and then our relationship with other people. So isn't it, it, it Christ is following the same theme here, right? Yep. One naturally flows out of the other without a right relationship with God. Our relationship with others will not be right either. The cause of the world's problem is that man needs to be reconciled to God. We will never love our neighbors as ourselves. If we first do not, love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. All of man's best efforts towards world peace will fail as long as men are living in rebellion against God. So, uh oh, he's got something. Uh, no, I mean, we talked about this a couple times, like in episode 149, we said, how can we love the unlovable? Um, but the question, the, the the, uh, here, uh, episode 38 from season one, can one love without God? Mm. We kind of talked about that with the idea right. of, you know, can, we can, re- I remember your argument and I still think about it is the fact of I, like, I, I do believe that we all have a common grace where it's like, yeah, we want to do the right thing because we're made in God's image. Sure. But you kept c- countering with, and I see it more and more every day is the fact of, okay, well, what's the motivation behind it? Right. You're being kind. So therefore you get stuff back or you get a feeling or you get something, which, which I mean, God, I think natively puts those inside of us. But yes. if we say, okay, so why'd you do that? Well, I want to honor God in my life. Not because I want to get a bonus or I want to get a right. reward. I want to get this. Like we, we have, you know, we, we, we teach our kids with reward systems yes. to help promote yep. good behavior. Right. But if our ultimate reason is the fact of just serving ourselves, it's going to just let us down. Well, that's why if you look at it, this is a com- compounding, right? So the first right. thing that Christ says is the golden rule. The second thing is he, he makes it a little more difficult, right? The golden rule is hey, how you want to be treated, treat others that way, right? So that's mm-hmm. the basic. And then we go into, all right, let's look at the, take it to the next level. Let's take it to the next step. The why behind that reason is to, is to because you're supposed so, to love God. Right. And so now we're getting a little harder, a little harder. So here comes the next hardest wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry. That was awesome. <laughs> Terrible. That was awesome. <laughs> so again, from gotquestions.org. Uh, dot org. 
Uh, what does it mean not to let your sun go, our sun go down on your anger? So don't let the sun go down on your anger, right? So we go, all right, golden rule. Now we look at loving God, loving others. And how hard is it when you're mad to not let the sun go? I think of me and Janiel, and this this always this first plays in my mind. Anytime we've been in an argument, it's like, I can't let the sun go down on my anger, but I'm really mad right now. How do I get rid of this? So here we go. Let's talk about it. So in Ephesians 4, uh, 25 through 27, uh, it says this, Therefore, putting away lying, speaking the truth, each other each one to his neighbor because we are members of one another be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger and don't give the devil an opportunity paul gets practical in the latter half of the letter of ephesians in this section he exhorts believers to tell the truth to each other be angry without sinning which we talked about stop stealing work so they can give to others in need use the words to edify others not grieve the holy spirit Put away sins such as anger. Be kind to others. Forgive others just as God forgives them. So in Ephesians 4, 26, we have the command to be angry and yet do not sin. This statement is probably a reference from Psalms 4, 4, where it says, tremble and do not sin. The particular psalm is sometimes titled, uh, quote, unquote, a night prayer or an evening mm-hmm. prayer of trust in God. Verse 4 continues, when you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Ooh, that's one's a hard one. Uh, perhaps this part of the psalm was meant to help your prayerful reader resolve any anger issues in the heart before going to bed. Paul uses this Old Testament passage as a springboard for his command, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Anger must be controlled and we should never use it to sin. If we do become angry, we should deal with the anger and its root quickly and then promptly put it away from our lives. We should strive to keep short accounts and forgive those who need to forgive in a timely manner before the sun goes down. If we hold on to anger, we risk, and here's where I wanted to hit home. When you hold mm-hmm. on to anger, we run the risk of bitterness and resentfulness, which provide the devil with a foothold in our lives. Unchecked anger among believers will break fellowship and bring damage to the church. We must be careful to heed the closing exhortation of Ephesians 4. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 32. And so this is the primary purpose of not letting the sun go down in anger. So it's not just like, It'll mess you up. Man, I got to say sorry before the sun goes down and I go to bed because that is not what, what Paul is saying here. He's springboarding, really, in my opinion, off of what Christ is already teaching about the inside and why it's so important to clean that inside of that tomb of Hey, listen, if you don't deal with this anger issue, figure out what the root of it is and deal with it, mm-hmm. it's going to cause resentment and bitterness to start seeping in the more you hold on to it. And the more you hold on to it and start getting those feelings, the more foothold you give to Satan to attack you and attack others through you, which causes destruction amongst you and the fellowship that you have with others and with the church. And, you know, you know, thinking about this first, um, Oh, sorry, Beth just texted me, and she's like, oh, crap, it's 9.15 because of feeding legs oh, at yeah. 9. She goes, she, she probably forgot. But um, so I just threw me off. Uh, so with the idea of don't let the sun go down in your anger, I mean, really what the idea is the fact of don't let it carry over into the not just the next day, but the next thing and the next right. thing and the next thing because anger is, is, is a snowball. You know, it's not one of those things where it's like you get angry one time and then that's it. And then you just move on with your life. Right. It's a compound. It's like a compounding interest type thing. Of, right. You know, when your money's in the bank, you don't just only get interest. Or not in the bank. You get point like what? Oh, 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 one percent. <laughs> so, um, but it, it's like, it, you know, when you're in the market or whatnot, you have compounding interest. So you don't just make interest on the initial investment. You you get more money back and then you get more on the on the gains and the and the principal you put in. Right. So it's compounding interest. And anger kind of is the same idea. Anger never has a starting point. It picks up where it left off. Right. Now, there are some times, I will say, where there's nothing you can do but go to sleep. Some, because, I mean, you, you're angry with a coworker, you walk away. Sometimes you just got to deal with it the next day. Like, sure, that's just a fact. Sure. I do know for Beth and I sometimes where it's it's the way we process things of, of, our, of our situations where sometimes it is best for us to walk away. Walk away. Right. And for me, sometimes sleep on it. But And then, you know, that way I'm able to be in the right frame of mind for that conversation, too. I don't think Paul is but saying that. But I don't that, think that's he's saying you have to do it before you fall asleep. Right. I think it's more of saying, look, deal with this quickly. Right. Well, Don't well, let it right. You you mentioned that. What what is it? Uh, the short. You didn't say short list. Um, it was a. Uh, 
where is it? You uh, uh, keep short accounts. Right. And this yep. is one thing. Right. And I remember I was talking with, uh, with Joe. What's up, Joe? My brother-in-law, our resident Catholic friend. <laughs> and, you know, this is the one thing that I do think that Catholics, that I love about the Catholic tradition, even though I'm like, you don't have to confess your sins to a priest. You can just confess them right to God. But the biggest thing with the, with confessional is the idea of, of keep short accounts of your sure. sin. And I do think that there is a beauty in trying to keep short accounts. And that's why... Um, uh, more reformed traditions like you know uh, Presbyterian and Lutheran, Lutheran and even Catholics, they do communion every single week or the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist, whatever you call it. They do it every single week because what's the command in the Lord's Supper that that Paul gave? Before you take of the table, what soul. are you supposed to do? Yeah, go to your Search brother. your soul, go to your brother, because right. leave your sacrifice at the altar. Same right. with the altar. Leave your sacrifice at the altar. Go figure out whatever the crap you need to figure out, then come back. Because, right. you know, a sacrifice of you, you know, lip service, a heart service is more important than the lip service. Right. It's more important to take care of what's going on than to give a sacrifice to God. Not saying the sacrifice to God isn't important either. No, it's but, saying. But the idea with right. communion that I've heard one per, one pastor speak on is the fact of communion help us keep short accounts. And so in the traditional church liturgy, there's what is called the confessional time, mm -hmm. where you, you are actually called to maybe not like walk over to the, the other neighbor and confess your sins, which may, maybe you have to, but it's more the fact of how often do we actually, and I'm asking myself this question, how often do we actually have time and make time to sit, reflect, challenge ourselves? What we read there in Psalms, what was that verse Psalm again? Psalm 4, 4. Uh, Psalm 4, 4, uh, where it talks about the evening prayer, where it says, when you are on your bed, search your heart and be silent. Right. How often do we do that? Right. And I do think this is a challenge for pastors who are listening, for churches, of do we give time in our worship service as a part of that? Well, and I, that, that's a cool opportunity. I, I think it's, it goes beyond that, though, because oh, we're yeah, supposed yeah, to take 100%. up our cross daily and follow him, right? So part of that, how do you take up a cross? What is our cross? What's our cross? If we're taking up a cross daily, what's the cross? Right? What did the cross represent? Forgiveness. The forgiveness of sins, right? Yep. So how, do you, how if you don't confess your sins, how do you know what you're forgiven for? Right. And, and, so and what I'm leaning it, into is I'm thinking like the rhythm. Remember we talked about the beginning and like in January, like, like what rhythms are you making yeah, in your life? Right, Can right. you create a rhythm of checking you check yourself before you wreck yourself man we are all full of it with the one-liners today it's because of the coffee was so dang good i got a second cup and i'm not sleeping tonight <laughs> i didn't have suck. the second cup because i have to sleep essentially so okay so so, so far we talked about so the golden, the golden rule, rule right and then we said the two greatest commandments yep. love god love others uh and then we went into don't let the sun let set the sun. on your anger right and so now we're going to get into the the latter part of what paul was talking about there uh of ephesians 4 32 be ca uh, compassionate to another forgiving one another just as christ forgive you so we got to forgive and you will be forgiven right mm -hmm. so in matthew 6 jesus is teaching disciples how to pray and in doing so outlines how we are restored in intimacy with God whenever we have displeased him. Mm. In fact, Jesus instructs us to build into our prayers a request for God to forgive us in the same way that we are forgiving others who have harmed us, Matthew 6, 12, which is forgive us this day, or our, forgive our debts as we... As, as we also forgive our debtors. Exactly. So if these are those things we, ha uh, we have not forgiven when we ourselves pray for forgiveness, then practically speaking, we are asking God not to restore a right relationship with us after we sin to emphasize the importance of restoring broken relationships with our brothers and sisters jesus states that asking for god's forgiveness for one's own sins all the while withholding forgiveness from someone else is not only bizarre but hypocritical mm -hmm. we cannot possibly walk with god in true fellowship if we refuse to forgive others to be sure, an unforgiving spirit is a serious sin and should be confessed to God. If we have unforgiveness in our hearts against someone else, then we are acting in a way that is not pleasing to God, making our prayers and a proper living relationship with him difficult. God will not hear our prayers unless we show ourselves ready to grant forgiveness. To quote John Calvin on this verse, if we are not harder than iron, this exhortation ought to soften us and render us disposed to forgive uh offenses. And this is from uh, his commentary in Matthew, Mark, and Luke volume one. Mm -hmm. A second biblically plausible interpretation of Matthew 6, 14 through 15 is that it's saying anyone who refuses to forgive others and demonstrating that he has not truly received Christ's forgiveness himself. Any sin committed against us, no matter how terrible, is trivial in comparison to our sins against God. If God has forgiven us of so much, how could we refuse to forgive others of so little? 
Matthew 6, 14 through 15, according to this view, proclaims that anyone who harbors unforgiveness against others has not truly experienced God's forgiveness. Both inter- interpretations strongly deny the salvation is dependent on our forgiving others. Whether it's Matthew 6, 14 through 15 is speaking of relational forgiveness or whether it's the gl- declaration that unforgiveness is the mark of an unbeliever, the core truth is the same. We should forgive others because God, through Christ, has forgiven us, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Is it wrong for someone who has truly experienced God's forgiveness to refuse to grant forgiveness to others? So, in those two viewpoints, right? My my viewpoint is the relational aspect. It's not the mark of an unbeliever aspect. Uh, I would say that in the relational aspect, um, we tend to get self focused so much that we forget how much. Uh, I can't believe how Mark treated me. Like I can't forgive. Him I mean, for I that. think it's fair to process I, that. And, and I think know? well, I think there's a when we're talking about unforgiveness, mm-hmm. right? We're talking about, I think, more than just I haven't forgiven you yet. Like you, you wronged me today, and it's tomorrow, and I just haven't forgiven you yet, right? Mm-hmm. I think unforgiveness is a solid choice of I will not forgive you mm. under for any circumstance. I I'm choosing not to forgive you or to even try to forgive you. I think that's more what we're we're going down the line here of. Yep, and, and I remember. Uh I know I brought this up before uh, with, with dealing with forgiveness with, with my situation, um, with my counselor a lot. And I remember Neil, well, hopefully Neil's still listening. What's up, Neil, if you is? Um, not R, is. But if you is. But I remember Neil saying that, you know, what is forgiveness? It's not forgetting. It's not, you know, there's natural consequences. And then there's, oh, what do we tell our kids? There's natural consequences. And then there are... Um, I mean, what's the word? Geez, why can't I actually pull this out of my butt tonight? Um, there's, there, there's, there's natural consequence. Just what this is the result of your action. That's just natural. It's what happens. The loss of trust. There's, um, loss of this. If something's broken broke, relationship, right? or or just stuff like you, the natural consequence of you forgetting to study is a bad grade. Right. Your teacher doesn't hate you and gave you a bad grade. It's the fact of you didn't show up. So the natural consequence is this, and rather than a like disciplinary action, and so. You know, with, with forgiveness, there is natural consequences that come of people's natural decisions. And at the same time, you know, just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean you forget what happened. It doesn't mean you're buddy, buddy, best friends again. It means, you know, as much as you are able to be at peace with one another. Mm-hmm. And then also, but with that forgiveness, what forgiveness is, is no longer wanting to receive payment back. And so when you think about it in monetary terms, when if, if the if the bank or someone was to forgive someone's loan, you're not saying, oh, the loan never existed. It's the fact of I'm not requiring you to pay back this loan. The, lo- the loan was there. I'm telling you, you no longer owe me for that. And so what forgiveness is, is looking at someone and saying, you no longer owe me this. Which is exactly what Christ did for 100%, us. 100%. He paid the debt. And so God says, all right, I, I no longer require this out of you. Right, because my son has and, already and, paid. And you know, I'm, I'm being honest. Like thoughts still come up. I mean, sure. I, I, you know, still catch myself thinking if a bus comes by. I mean, huh? but like you know, like that's like that. But those are the internal struggles sure. I have. But right. but forgiveness is no longer ex- expecting that person to pay on account of what they did. But rather, it's the fact of what. Well, we talked about a couple episodes ago. Vengeance's mind says the Lord, I will repay evil. Right. You just you know treat evil with good, and you will reap coals, uh, heaping coals upon their head. And so with forgiveness, it's that next step of you're no longer someone screwed you over. Someone did something. Someone hurt you. You're no longer looking for payback. You're no longer looking for, right. you know, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. You're right. no longer looking for karma. There are natural consequences that will happen. Sure. But you are no longer saying you owe me this because well, you did this to me. And instead you turn over to God and say, God, you do what you got to do with it. That's not my job. My job is to walk in such a way where I do forgive them. Maybe I verbally say it. Maybe I sure. I don't because sure. you don't have that opportunity, but you don't live expecting them to pay back a bill that they, right. and that I, they I, ring up. And I think it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't, you, there's still not pain or hurt or anything like that to work through or walk through. I think it's a, just like you said, it's i I'm not looking, I'm not looking to see anything bad done to them or repayment done. I'm, I'm just, I'm turning it over to God and I, I it, it is what it is, but 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 there's still a punishment. That's what I was looking for. There's natural consequences, and then there's punishment. Right, but when you're looking for the other person to be punished, you have not forgiven. And intentionally them. go after them to punish them. Like, well, like, not like, even intentionally, but just saying, "Oh, I hope God gets them." Like, like 
that is where it's like, okay, you have to question, am I truly forgiven? If I'm seeking for punishment for them for an action, should others be seeking punishment for me for my actions? Because God forgave us. Right. So if God forgives right. us, we need to and ought to forgive other people. That's that's right. the mark mark of a Christian. Right, exactly. So so uh, we, we've talked about some different things here and, and, and compounding uh, on unforgiveness and why we should do it and, and how some some biblical ways. So what are some practical ways, right? What mm, okay. so so I brought a, a couple one, two I think three different things, and then and then we can give final thoughts and and close out. That's cool. cool. All right. So all right. This first one comes from the Gospel Coalition, and it's an article written by a Joshua Lemayan, uh, and he had three points. Yeah, good luck pronouncing yeah. that last name. L e m a y i a n. It Le- looks like Le-Mayan. a it looks like Leviathan, but Lemayan. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. <laughs> Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So number one, I, and I like this. He said, "Invite counsel." Right. Mm-hmm. What do we do after we've had a prayerful search, uh, or ha- after we've prayerfully searched our hearts and reached a conclusion that anger is not misplaced? How are we to respond to what we can sense is righteous anger? Firstly, we must be careful before we become certain that we have reached a correct conclusion. It is important that we remember the anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God, James 1.20. Therefore, we must seek counsel of fellow believers and invite them to assess our anger. And I think that's a good, fair point, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get uh, blinded by the tree and we can't see the forest through the tree. Oh, dang. Wait, say that again. We get blinded by the tree and you can't see the forest through the trees. Yeah, I like that. So when you're so close to a situation and you think it may be righteous, maybe it's not righteous, or maybe it is righteous, but mm-hmm. it, it wouldn't be a bad thing to, to invite the counsel of, of trusted fellow Christian brothers. Well, and what, what's the verse in Proverbs? They're in, um, their safety in a multitude of counselors. Right, exactly. So so I think that's a, a good first point that he had. You know, invite counsel. Now, this is not a gossip sesh, guys. No. This no, is not for no, no, gossiping. No. This is a... Help me know if... Assess my anger. Did did you hear what they did? Yeah. Can we pray for them? Like, no, that's gossip. But no, it's more the fact that I'm trying to see, am I right or wrong? Help me understand and work through my emotion. Is this a righteous anger or or an unrighteous anger? Which I've done with you so many times over the years. And there's a time where it's like, Mark, get your head out your butt. Like, come on, dude. And there's other times where it's like, yeah, they done messed up, A.A. Ron. Like, (laughs) you know, so there's there's (laughs) things. But so I like that. So it's not gossiping. It's inviting counsel to help you work through and process. It's not one to talk bad about a person or situation. You're inviting helpers. I have a couple trusted people that I'm inviting to to look at my situation and tell me, am I I righteously angry or unrighteously angry? So number two is avoid underreacting. I like this point. Overreacting, but underreacting. It may be that we are correctly stir- stirred by injustice, abuse, corruption, gross evil, or culturally acceptable practices that hurt people, such as female genitalia cutting, child marriage, stuff we talked about a couple weeks ago. Yep. Surely we cannot remain apath- uh, apathetic to these ills. Our zeal for the will of God to be done on earth as it is in heaven compels us to act. And I think that's what have been good verse talk about a few weeks ago. Is yes. that's yeah right. So this is the usefulness of right, righteous anger, not unrighteous, but righteous anger. While we often sin by overreacting in anger, we must guard our hearts against underreacting. Mm. We should be encouraged when we are stirred to anger by the right things and to the right proportions. Right. That's so, interesting. So being angry about the target situation you can be is probably about it. righteous but burning target is probably overreacting in your unrighteous anger <laughs> at that point right it's i would agree there's there's both but not saying anything or having the conversations about it and 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 telling people oh, they're okay for living this lifestyle uh, is kind of under remember the verse but you know the bible even tells us that it's okay to hate evil right god, and, and and you know everyone talks about oh god doesn't hate anything no god freaking hates evil he hates evil he detests it what, what's that verse he, he detests it right and right. if we're supposed to have the same mind as jesus and the same mind as god well, there are things to hate, and, and Jesus, he, that's why that's why homeboy flipped on tables in the tabernacle, because he hated, and that was an injustice that was happening to people. There was a barrier for them worshiping God, and so, right. bro, flipped the Monopoly tables. Well, and, and you got to remember, well, I just lost it. <laughs> Never mind, we'll move on. I had it, and it was like, as soon as I started talking, it went. Anyways, so let's move on. So, uh, oh, that's, wait. Oh, I lost it again. <laughs> it came and then it, you said anger. So, so, oh, the so God is good. Oh, that was right? impressive. Wow. Yeah, so it came back. I had to think about it. But God don't is lose good. It, don't lose it. So the opposite of good is evil. So the opposite of God is evil. 
Okay, so we should hate the things that are evil. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. Evil. Exactly. <laughs> no said. I, I, I don't know how to transition. Right. So number three and the last thing from the Gospel Coalition says, leverage anger to love others. Hmm. As Christians, we should respond to this by seeking ways to leverage our anger for the good of others. This may mean calling our neighbors to a meeting to address the lack of speed bumps or starting an organization that will help the poor. What angers us may point us to something that we need to leverage for the glory of God. Righteous, well-leveraged anger will lead us to pray, go on missions, stand against injustices, or even lovingly confront those that have wronged us. Is there a societal ill? Societal? Societal. Oh, I can't read I know that word, guys. Societal. Look, look. I can't say Wilboro, but I can say societal. It's my sixth. (laughs) Anyways, see, we all bought. We We got got, got this. We got Uh, you. Societal ill that has uh, been proven provoking. I can't read tonight. That has been provoking you to anger? Question. Is there a societal ill that has been provoking you to anger? What are some ways that are available to you that can be leveraged for the good of those around you? So it can draw us to action, right? Being righteously angry, angry like Christ in the temple can draw us to action, like flipping over money changers. But that tables. was but so. he wasn't just doing it because he was mad at Monopoly. It was no, the fact cl- that literally the people were right, because it was the fact that people were selling these things in order to line their pockets. Right. Because they had to have sacrifices. So instead of charging a normal fair rate, it's like six flags with water. Right. So the next article, it's another three things that we can do to overcome or manage anger. This comes from Tacoma Christian Counseling. This is uh, Dr. Kevin Ball says this one restrain it restrain the unrighteous anger proverbs 29 11 tells us that the fools vent their anger but the wise quietly hold it back hmm. this this scripture does not mean that the wise bury their anger or don't deal with it but means that they control their anger and how they express it when you restrain your anger you keep it within limits so that you don't overreact i like it so number two is reevaluate it james 1 19 through 20 says my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that god desires god's way of dealing with anger is to be slow to anger there are some things that you need to let roll off your shoulders and not internalize or act on when you reevaluate a person's words or actions, you often find that there's no need to get angry or to get angry as the person really did not intend to hurt you or was merely acting out of their own biases, which is not a reflection of you. Hmm. So again, this isn't, a blanket statement for every circumstance, but these are some good things that you can look at. Uh, number three, release it. Colossians three eight says, "But now you must also get rid of your uh, get rid yourselves of all such things as these: anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. When you deal with God's uh, with when you deal with anger God's way, you feel it. Vent it in a safe way, possibly complaining to an innocent third party, where no one is harmed, and then release it. You get rid of it." From your body, heart, and mind. Again, that was Dr. Kevin Ball and the Tacoma Christian Counseling. So this last one comes from Motivation and Growth. I almost said grace. Motivation and Growth, How to Let Go of Anger, a Christian Perspective. So this is a quick 20 tips. 20 tips from Fuller. 20 tips. No, not from Fuller. Well, okay. From from Motivation and Growth. No, from Fuller via Motivation (laughs) and Growth. So there are many techniques to help deal with anger. You may find some of these tips helpful to you. This is what they say. Number one, be aware of your emotional state. Number two, identify what triggers your anger, like getting hit in the no-no zone, as as Mark states <laughs> Mine's my several face. times. That too. Don't hit, don't hit me in the face. Number three, use I statements to express your feelings. Number four, be assertive without I being aggressive. I don't like you hitting my face, kids. <laughs> be That's assertive. Crazy. Don't you hit my face again. <laughs> without, that was bad oh, tone. Oh, number sorry. five says that. pay attention to your tone of voice, bro. Dang it. So number six, practice breathing techniques <sighs> to breathe correctly and slowly. Inhale. Exhale. Smell the cookies. Never blow out the candles. <laughs> Smell the coffee. Mm. Blow it. Blow on it because it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, number seven. Take a break and go for a walk or listen to calm down. So this is something like you used to state that it's sometimes good for you and Beth. Sometimes it's good for me and Jill. So take Jill, your coffee, Jill, smell Jill. it, breathe out, take a walk with it. Take a walk with it, or walk to Starbucks. Walk back. 
walk to Tacoa, walk back, whatever your favorite coffee house is. I will is. say, the day I found out about all this, your boy walked to Jimmy John's to get some food. <laughs> there you go. So uh, there's that. Maybe that, was, maybe that was a couple days in a row. I remember. <laughs> Number eight, listen to relaxing music. Number nine, change your angry thoughts into positive ones. This one's so hard for me. I I, I have I struggle with that one. I feel like right. that one's a little like hey change. It. I, but yeah. but the, I think that the positive thought is more the fact of what has God done for me for forgiveness. How right. would I want to be treated? Yeah. So it's not just like Peter Pan think happy thoughts and fly away right. off the Neverland. Well, and I think that count goes into number ten. Count your blessings, right? Ooh, what name has, them one by one, homie. <laughs> count your blessings. Name them one by Could one. Someone do like okay. <laughs> someone needs to remix that mug. <laughs> Because that would be balling. Maybe we'll talk to some of, like Rent Collective to remix it. No, there's some guys I follow on Instagram that I think would be pretty balling to like <laughs> remix, remix it. All right, so number 11, practice self-reflection and ask yourself, how will what I am about to say solve the problem and encourage people? Or what events or situations trigger my anger? And then that's just knowing it, yeah. Yeah, so number 12, change your focus by engaging in an activity that requires your focus attention, such as cleaning the house, doing yard work, reading a book, Smoking et meat, grilling on the grill. <laughs> that is not what I thought you were going to say. Yeah. What? Like smoking <laughs> weed is what I thought you were going to say. And I'm like, wait, wait, hang on. What? What? And then you said smoking meat. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Public service announcement. Folder. <laughs> Sorry. I've lost it. I, I lost it. It's, <laughs> it's late for me. Yes, it is. All right, keep going. All right. Anyway, let's go back to number 12. Number No, we just did number 12. Number 13. Number 13. Pray and open your heart to God. Ask him to bring change in your mind and heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to control your life and give you a new perspective on the situation. Number 14, learn conflict resolution techniques and implement them. <laughs> oh, that's a that. big one. Number 15, count to 10 or even do 10 or 100 before responding. Or you can do one, two, three, one, two, four. buckle no. my shoe, three, four. When you feel so mad that you want to roar, take count a deep, deep breath, breath and count, count to four. four. One, two, three. Daniel Tigers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, number 16, take time out as a break to cool off. Number 17, engage in physical activities such as jogging or running or taking care of eight kids. That's a physical activity that nobody thinks about. Number 19. Um, yep. It says yep. relaxing. <laughs> it's physical activity. Oh, yeah. It is physical and mental. <laughs> number and emotionally and spiritual, baby. It's an out-of-body experience. <laughs> Woo! Number 18, practice forgiveness and do not hold grudges. Mm. Number 19, practice self-care, which I you know how I feel about that. I'm not about the self-care thing, but that's just me. Anyways, number 20. I mean, but this is a little different. Practice journaling by writing down your thoughts and feelings. So I, I think that between all three of these articles. The biggest thing is not bottling it up. Don't, you got to let it out. Let, let it, it go. Let it out and let it go. Let it go. Let it Breathe go. Breathe it in. No, no, what is it? Breathe it in, breathe it out. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Let it go. Oh, that's what yeah. I'm saying, bro. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, so to recap the whole last hour, well, last 40, 57 minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah, but there's 20 minutes of banner. That's so true, la true. last 37 minutes. <laughs> uh, basically, I, I would say golden rule, two greatest commandments. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Learn to forgive as God forgave us. And then look at those practical lists. And, 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 but I, I, again, the practical steps are all practical implications based off of biblical teaching, which right. golden rule is, okay, how, do I, how, do, how would I want to be treated in this situation? Exactly. Treat other people in that way. But then there's also the love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as a self. There, I mean, there are some other principles that we didn't bring in, like as much as it is, as much as it is within you, live at peace with one another. Right. You can't force somebody to, you know, forgive you. Forgive if, me. <laughs> you can't force somebody to do it, but right. at the same time, I mean, you, you know. Um, and so. And remember, forgiveness is more about your relationship with God than than you, them forgiving you. But there also uh, is. But again, you know, but, and we can't forget that there are natural consequences and there's also punishment. And so this is where the difference is, is the fact of if someone's if, if, if someone sins against you, we have the ability to only control ourselves. But here's the other thing, too, is if we sin against someone else. We need to not just well just forgive me already like right. it's just normal or whatever right. it's the fact of no like like for mar like for marriages if there's porn involved or affairs or promiscuity or adultery let's just call a spade a spade it's hard to get that trust back yeah it's hard to get sure. that res like respect back it's hard to get these things back for friendships if you go behind someone's back and you just cut them down at the knees you you think that person's really going to be friends with you again no that's called a natural 
consequence. If you cheat at work, if you cheat at school and you get laid off and fired, I can't believe the company would do that. I just messed up one time. Nah, bro, that's called embezzlement. Like, <laughs> like, like there's all these different things that we think of the fact of the fact of, oh, if they would just forgive it, they would just, you know, for, for, what, what, what is, uh, for, for, forgive and, I mean, just for, forgive and forget, just forgive and move on. And I, think, and I think it's wise not to forgive and forget. Um, God chooses to forgive us our sins and, and separate forget. as far as east is to the west. Right. He chooses to still love us, but there are still natural consequences that come of it. And the same as we're trying to teach the kids of there's natural consequences to not taking a shower. Well, there's good consequences and bad consequences. It's what your choice dictates which consequence you're going to get. But if you're going to hang on to this anger so much that it eats you up, that it destroys your life. That's what the Bible is, is warning us against. Like I could take my personal situation, hold on to that grudge, and honestly ruin my marriage with, with Beth and I because oh, 100%. of the, the past trauma that I went you through. Could, you we, could be a woman hater right now and just be like, because of that, X, Y, and Z, you know, screw all women. Which there's a lot of people who do that on both sides of sure, the party. Sure, A party, both sides of the fence, argue, fence that whatever you want to call it, I guess. Spectrum. But, you know, at the, at, uh, here we go. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, Landing when it comes plane. to this conversation about unrighteous anger, I think we first need to check our own hearts. We need to check ourselves, figure out our, you know, when we're angry, it's the same idea as the fact that we need to self-reflect. We need to self-look in. Sometimes we need to ask for help and go, am I now, not am I justified in your anger? Because there's a difference between being justified in your anger versus asking the question of, am I holding on to this too much? Is, is, is am, am I viewing this from the wrong lens? Someone can be like, no, that was bad. Like, you got to figure this out, man. Sure. Or like, no, nah, you got to let that go. And so, but it, are you wanting to be the judge and jury? Do you want to be vindicated because that person screwed me over, so I want them to get screwed over? Right. Is that what you're looking to do? Because if you do that, you're going to watch yourself be destroyed by this thing. And the only thing that bitterness does is destroys you. It doesn't right. fix relationships. It doesn't make anything better. It can ruin your entire life. And you see this happen with people so many times where they let these grunt and you know, this is why we talk about this, like the old senile people where all they are just grumpy and, and no one wants to be around these, these old people that are just super mild time. Just grunt one. This is Mark Hyde's opinion. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> He's like, wait, what? No, no, no. I mean like, but when oh, people yeah, are you. all the time grumpy, people want to sure. avoid them right. because they have, like they have destroyed their own self that they're just not a joy to be around. And, and I'm not saying all old people, I'm saying some old people, but there's also people that are in our circle groups and our, our, our sphere of influence where I'm like, I don't want to be around you, man, because you're right. just negative as crap all negative the time. Negative Nancy. And I don't want to sorry, be a part of that. Nancy, I'm sorry. Uh, ne negative Nelly? I don't no, know. Sorry, everybody that's named Nelly. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, but <laughs> it, it's more the fact of like, there are going to be natural consequences of yes. the, there's natural consequences of the bitterness that goes inside of you as well. So uh, again, the biggest thing is, you know, keep a short ledger, keep a short leash, keep a short account of your own shortcomings and make sure that you are confessing your sins, the person that you sinned against and to God, make sure you're trying to build those relationships back right. up, but also understand that if someone sins against you in the most vile way possible, Yes, there are different ways to respond. There are biblical ways to respond. But at the end of the day, holding people, someone, so holding someone responsible for their decisions is not a sin and it's not a bad thing. It's when you take that, harbor that bitterness, let it grow and fester inside you where it says Satan has the foothold, you will destroy your well, life. And I think there's appropriate ways. And some most, but you still, uh, most you, instances, it's not up to you. To hold them accountable, right? So like here in America, there's a justice system, right? Mm -hmm. The justice system holds them accountable for egregious acts against somebody, right? Yep. It is not if if Joe Schmo killed somebody, it's not Peter Schmo's job to go kill Joe Schmo, right? Nope. It's the justice system. There's there's a procedure that we should follow the government's leading on that. It's just like you know, with the uh, SBC scandals and all the, the sexual misconduct that happened in that, <sighs> yeah. it's the courts, it's the police, it's those people that should be involved in dealing with dishing out the justice. And then on top of that, if they're unrepentant, then it's God's job to deal with it further beyond that. And that it's not our job. It's our job as brothers that if it hasn't been done to us, brothers and sisters to come around the victim and to help the victim in that. Yep. And then if it has happened to us, it's to figure out a way to be able to come to terms with there's 
a God in heaven that's forgiven you, so you need to forgive them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to forget that everything that happened, nor can you say, oh, I'm just going to let this person back and do whatever they want again. Mm -hmm. Like, you could set up boundaries. That's okay. Boundaries is a good word for that. That's okay to do. Putting up boundaries is okay to do. Uh, and, And likewise, if we're the offender, if I cut you down at the knees and I come back and I pour my heart out and say I'm sorry, and you say... I, I forgive you, but here's boundaries. I have to respect those boundaries, right? Mm-hmm. As the offender. And that's you coming the, with humility. If, that's that's where humility exactly. comes in. So if we're the offender, we should always respect the boundaries that people put up to us for being the offender. Yep. And likewise. Because that's a natural consequence of and, your actions. Right. And likewise, uh, as someone who has been offended against, we shouldn't make unrealistic boundaries with a true confessing repentant heart right if you backstab me called me blah 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 to whoever mm-hmm. and i said which, which for the record i have not and i said and, and we say we're you know okay i'm done being friends with you and you come back and you go I- i'm truly sorry and, and you really mean it, and i can tell you have a heart i can say all right mark i forgive you I don't know what friendships will look like. Let's set up these boundaries and maybe converse slowly and see what happens if I can move the boundaries at all. Mm-hmm. And if not, and Mark, you should be okay with that. And you and you would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Look, I'm truly sorry. And if you're really truly sorry, you should be okay with anything at that point because you were the offender in this. So re- regardless of what comes out and what happens, you should be okay with as a Christian, right? And so that's where I think we all need to lead to and we all should be looking at doing unto others what's best for them and what God would have for them and remembering what God has done for us and, and every um, uh, encounterment that we have uh, in, in this messy world that we have um, and, and even in the church, right? The messiness of church, we're all people, we're all sinners, we're all saved through Christ and God looks at Christ, it looks at us through Christ and, and that's the only reason why we are justified and even deemed saved and clean and justified. So that's all I got for my, my closing thoughts. What do you got, man? Anything else? Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. Time for Fun Facts with February. <laughs> You couldn't have said it Look any better than that. Look at you hitting them buttons, bro. Like, you hit that buttons. I'm like, that summed it all up right there. We ain't even got to say nothing else. Bam, button. I was trying to look at it. I'm like, shoot, what verse is that? Oh, yeah, Ephesians. There yeah, we that, go. That was so, a perfect verse. Let's end this episode, my dude. So, all right. What fun fact. This is episode 202, not 200. Sorry, YouTube. Yeah, sorry. 202. What fun fact do you got for this beautiful episode? Well, I don't know about you, Mark, but uh, I kind of like to play a uh, hand of poker here and there. And so I'm actually <laughs> kind of good at it. Are you? Well, Texas Hold'em? So, well, this is poker, not Texas Hold'em. There's a difference. Oh, I mean like... You mean like this a is straight up uh, five, five, five cards. card five card stud? I so, played it some, but not a whole lot. So so here's the thing, right? The odds of getting a royal flush are exactly one in six hundred and forty nine thousand seven hundred and forty. Shut up, really? Yeah, poker fiends have a slightly better chance of laying down a straight flush. Try seventy two thousand one hundred ninety two to one. Dang. Out of the seven hundred or seven thousand four hundred and sixty two distinctive five card poker hands, you have a forty. Pre- per- Forty-two percent chance of getting a single pair, though. So at least you can hold on to that. I mean, it may be a pair of twos. So okay, so you have a forty percent chance of getting a pair. So yeah, I don't know. So when you're betting all in on the house against the house, I wouldn't be betting not on a pair. <laughs> you got a royal flush. Yeah, bet it go all <laughs> for it. But don't, we're not telling you to go we're, gamble. We're not telling you go have a have a have an addiction. No, we're talking about if you're betting with pennies, dimes, and nickels. I'm talking about <laughs> if you're betting with them little plastic things in a friendly yeah. game. I will say, okay, so I don't like to. Pl- I mean, I I play games. There's nothing to them, but sure. like, like okay, we they, we play poker in Bible college, and <laughs> but it'd be like these four or five hour long poker games, and I I'm love like, them. but I'm like, okay, can I at least try to win? Like, like is there a buy in? Like, here's a can of pop. 
Here's a pop tart. Winner gets to take all the pop tarts. Like I think that's that that makes it a little bit more worth it. Yeah. Because by like hour well, four, I'm like I'm out. Screw this. I'm gonna go do something else better with my. Time. Gotta have a friendly something in there. But right? you know, people should be doing with their time. They should be checking out yes, RTC. Sir. They should be sharing the episodes with someone that they know, whether it's a spouse, a friend, a coworker, someone else who needs to have these conversations. Ma'am, there have been 202 episodes. I know some of you guys like to listen. Which if you're listening by order, you wouldn't be listening to this one. But there's some people who's like, man, I'm I'm listening. Order. I haven't caught up yet. Bro, there is no order. Sorry. It's we just, just the, whatever The numbers random. are more for us to remember. Back in what number said was like, Beth was 39. <laughs> yeah. Joe Frerichs it, was so 40. So we have something to reference back to. 100%. And just to know what episode number we have, because sure. it's really, really dope. But if you haven't listened for a while, there are literally thousands of you guys listening to the show. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, so that way more people can find the show just like you. Check us out on YouTube. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button or the bell notification Beep. to know when we are on. Don't forget to get your tickets to Revive Fest. Yes, sir. It's coming up here in a couple weeks. We need to get you guys there to hang out with us and really be part of the RTC community. In person. And you might have noticed we don't do a lot of Instagram anymore these days, but no. we've been doubling down inside the Facebook community. So be part of the Facebook community. Find other like-minded believers just like you to continue these conversations. We're going to continue these conversations next week and the weeks to follow. So hang out. But until then, though, guys, take it easy. Take it easy.